rabbi and the president to be. Should we start? Yeah, I'm just uh, letting people know I am recording this, so it'll be available online. With the video? Uh, with the video, yes. Oh, the video. It's a good thing I oh. get dressed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you could turn your video off. You know, Jay, we have to behave ourselves now, is that it? We have to behave ourselves. You have to look proper. I, Jay, oh, tip my, your screen oh, my forward a little bit. Jay we, only, Jay, we only see your face, nothing that you're wearing, so don't worry. <laughs> ah, sit back uh, a little bit. There now, you go. Now we can now see your face. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Exactly. Good morning. Exactly what I'm supposed to. If I'm not mistaken, yesterday was the ninth Shabbos that we couldn't be in shul. Yes. Um, it really builds up. This uh, week, Shabbos Shorts was sponsored by two families, the Oppenheimer family in honor of Craig's uh, special anniversary of Bar Mitzvah, and by the Price family to commemorate the eighth Yorkside coming up of Dr. Clifton Price, Akiva Ben Avraham. We also have muscle toes this week to uh, David Abrams on the birth of a great grandson. Muscle toes. Muscle toes. Ben Stock and uh, Avi Gan on the birth of a great grandson. Muscle toes. Jennifer and Yitzhak Cohn and to Abby and Chaim Tour on the birth of a granddaughter. Muscle toes. Muscle toes. And uh, I don't think Lou is here. Lou's not here today uh, because his uh, his wife is sitting shiva. Lewis, no, Lewis, is Lewis is here. Lewis. Yeah, he's here. So yeah. I'm here, Jerry. Oh, that's right. Okay, thank you. Um, and your wife, Judy, passing of her brother, Richard Ostrovsky. Okay. Uh, Raphael. What's that? Raphael Ostrovsky. Raphael. Raphael, yeah. Yeah. Um, any other announcements I need to make before we ask for... Can, does somebody have David uh, Hornestay's phone number? Uh, he's trying to log in, but he's been trying to log in for a few minutes now. And he's not getting through. So if somebody could give him a call. Okay. Uh, so uh, category two, uh, Rafua Shlema, please raise your hand and we'll repeat the name. I've got David's phone number. What should I do? Just give him a call and tell him that his uh, he's not logging in. Ask him to log out and then log back in. Maybe he'll come in. Okay. Hey, Rafur Shlema, please raise your hand. Okay, Michael. Let Scott go first. Scott. David Mayor Ben Chaya Sipa. David Mayor Ben Chaya Sipa. Esther Basara. Esther Basara. Zora Bas Esther. Zora Bas Esther. Marissa Bas Toby. Marissa Bas Toby. Mayor Ben Liba. Mayor Ben Liba. Rachmiel Moshe Ben Rachel. Rachmiel Moshe Ben Rachel. Okay, I'm not really sure what that will do. Okay. Rav Rafal Yisrael Yaakov Bela Ben Itel. Zora Bas Leia. Shoshana Shoshana Tova Bas Esther. Okay, I think uh, there was another hand up. Yeah, Joe. Just blurt it out. Yitzhak Ben Brindle. Yitzhak Ben Brindle. Uh, this is Stuart uh, Udelbat Rachel. Udelbat Rachel. Thank you. Welcome, Stuart, to Meritus Royal. Thank you again. Sun's almost ready to go down over there. Um, okay, category. Uh, Wait a minute, I, I have a name here. Go ahead. Um, uh, Rachamim ben Miriam. Rachamim ben Miriam. And Chaya Riva Bas Yehudas Devora. Chaya Riva Bas Yehudas Devora. Thank you. Okay, uh, any your sites this week? Of course, we have the your site, uh, Rabbi Shimba Yechoi and Lagba Omer. Of so we, we should all have that in mind because uh, the Zohar, as Rav Shimon Bayakoy is known, uh, had mystical powers, and um, whatever one prays for should be Makuyim, especially on Lag Baomer. So we should have that in mind. Interesting uh, point. If you get the Washington Post today, 
and you go to the comics section, there is a whole comic in the colored comics section that talks about Log Ba Omer. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> if anybody's is interested in this very <laughs> tour of Log Ba Omer, my daughter is giving a virtual tour in Israel. If you need the link, uh, send me an email. A, a, a tour of what, Jonathan? Uh, it's a virtual tour of uh, of, of uh, Israel featuring Lag Omer. That's at two o'clock. Wow! Okay. And there's uh, she has another one after that. But, uh, a lot of bon they do a lot of bonfires in Israel. Right. I just was going to mention that one of the main bonfires, of course, is at in Miron at the uh, at the site. And I didn't realize this, but when I I read it that there is one Rebbe, he's known as the Boyana Rebbe, he's a, a descendant of, of the Rijana Hasidus, uh, which is very famous. He is the one, Boyan has historically been the one honored with lighting the bonfire in Miron all through the years. I wasn't aware of this. It just so happens that the Boyana Rebbe, as a young boy, davened with me in the same base medrash growing up that I grew up in in Washington Heights. So I know him very well. I haven't seen him in years. He's a few <laughs> years younger than me, but he's the Bayana Rebbe. So when I read the whole story, it was amazing to me how when he took over, they go up to Miron. I don't know if they'll do it this year. I don't know what the rules are, but uh, they, they go up and he lights the bonfire where you have maybe a half a million people as you, whoever's been there. And I have, it's an unbelievable sight to be in Miron and Lag Omer. So he lights it, and then, of course, everything, you know, everything goes <clears> in there. Uh, two things. Uh, one, I, I read yesterday, I don't remember which it was, Israel Report or something, one of the, one of the newsletters, that they're, they've banned all bonfires this year for, for safety reasons, for coronavirus safety in terms of crowds, and then for personal safety, uh, that they don't want people want lighting bonfires in their backyards and then <laughs> other kinds of problems. Uh, Scott, could you tell me, tell us which comic strip that was for those of us who don't get the Washington Post? It's not a, it's not a comic. It's something, it's in history or something to it, that extent. It's called, it's called Flashback. I think it's flashback. called Flashback. And yeah, it, okay. it's it's about uh, twelve panels talking about uh, all, uh, Log Baomer and what Jews do during Log Baomer. It's really oh, wow. it was pretty startling to see. Yeah. Scott, do you mind doing a favor? Menasha, what do you, you know about social distancing in Miron? Have they said anything? I don't remember specifically Miron. I I do know that there was some stuff basically banning banning bonfires specifically for this Log Baomer. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see how they social right. distance in Miron with a half a million people. <laughs> yeah, I think they were basically saying people shouldn't even go, but obviously some people are going to go. You know that. So. Right. I think I think they uh, suspended all uh, public transportation to Maroon. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Irv, you have a yard site. We have a Mishabara, Irv, don't we? Uh, well, I, I, for uh, Nathaniel Elon Ben Shania Sipora. Nathaniel Elon Ben. Again. Natanel Elon Ben Shana Sifora. Natanel Elon Ben Shana Sifora. Natanel Felber. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, are, we, are we there, Jay, or what? Yes, yes, please. Okay, just one postscript. Uh, Michael and I uh, spoke after uh, the Shear last week, and I mentioned something to him that I hadn't really shared with everyone and wanted to make a point. Um, you know, the Gemara, we constantly had for weeks and weeks been talking about the the uh, the uh, what we say that um, that the uh, chashen mamona chashen ashvuasa. So the Gemara there concludes that we are not chashen ashvuasa because a person would lie, or at least with a lie, you know that you can't retract. So I recalled a chazal, and I'm trying to find it because it's not. I was looking in the Parsha in Yisro and I couldn't find it. I have to look further. The Chazal say the following, that when the Aser Sadibras were given, of course, we know that the earth shook with each of the, um, with each of the, uh, of course, the, the sound of the, the kol, uh, kol, and then the, and the, the kolos who brought him. However, it, when the third commandment was given, Osisa Hashem Hashem Lashav, 
the world shook to such an extent that it almost seemed as if it would break apart. Why? Because of all of the commandments, the Sisa Hashem Hashem Lishav has the 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 strictest and the most uh, uh, the most powerful bearing of all the mitzvahs to swear God's name Lashav. So we've been talking for the longest time that that's people wouldn't really swear using God's name, etc. And we have to understand where it comes from because that Chazal really tells us whether you realize it or don't realize it actively, that swearing in God's name is something that intuitively you don't do. So, at, so that Chazal really gives us the, the, uh, the fodder for why we don't do it, whether we know it or not, the, the world almost fell apart, almost broke apart because of Sisa Hashem Hashem Lushav. It's a very powerful Chazal. I'm trying to find the makor of it because I, I, I remember it and I've heard it, but I, I can't get my hands on it. But that's, in other words, that's the strength of, of not swearing falsely. Okay, so last week, um, we, we finished the Gemara down to the bottom of that uh, um, four or five lines from the bottom, and we did not reach a conclusion uh, on Rosera's Kasha. Rosera's Kasha was, talk to Echad Lefanenu, if someone grabbed the talus in front of Bezdin, Mahu, the Gemara went back and forth, but he was silent, not silent, silent at the beginning, then protested at the end. So the Gemara wanted to bring certain proofs, and at the end brought no proof because every case that was brought was distinguished for another reason. So now the Gemara uh, is going to um, go off on a little different tangent. It's the, uh, the last few words of the first wide line on the bottom of Vava Medalev. Im Tim Salome. But before we start, I have to speak out a principle that is in Shas. It's in the Gemara in Kedushan and other places. And the Gemara says, um, particularly with regard to uh, a comparison between Hegdish and non Hegdish, and the Gemara says, Amirasa Legvoa Kimisirasa Lehegdish. What does that mean? We know that in order to make a Kenyan to acquire something, you have to do a physical act. I mean, you can say, I'm buying it, but for instance, on Pesach, when we sell the Chumash to the rabbi, what do we do? We pick up the handkerchief and we lift it because that's called Kabbalah's Kenyan. That's one way of making a Kenyan. If you buy an ox from your friend, then ox is a heavy animal. So, Technically, you, you go and you push the ox so that it should move a step, that's Kenyan. With a lighter animal, you can pull it. But it's, it's manifested through a physical act. That's Kabbalah's Kenyan. When you want to make something hegdish, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is say, I'm making this Kodesh. This is now Kodesh, Lashem, it goes to the Kohen, or in, in olden days, a carbon, whatever. So hegdish, is an, e is an easier way of making Kenyan. Therefore, the statement, Amirasa Legvoa, speaking out to Gavoa, to the Rabbanish Lalam of the Hegdish, is Kimisi Russell Lehegdish, as if he pulled or pushed or lifted for a non Hegdish matter. That's the principle we have to understand to go forth in this Gemara. All right, so with that principle in mind, let's look at the Gemara. In Tim Salomer, <clears throat> if you want to say, talk for Echa Befanenu, Motsi and Osa Miyado, in other words, there's two ways of looking at the case of talk for Echa Befanenu, meaning if someone grabs it in front of us. You can either say, Motsi and Osa Miyado, we take it away from him and you can't acquire it through grabbing. Or you could say, no, that you can, because remember, we're speaking about a situation where two people are there, one grabs it, and the other one either has to immediately protest or immediately stay silent. What happens if he's silent and then protest? That was the whole child in the Gemara last week, is if there is a delay in protesting, is that considered as if he protested or as if he admitted? 
So in the case where he doesn't immediately protest and only protests after the fact, the Gemara asks, do we take it out of his hand and say, no, he protested? Or do we say he didn't protest and hamotzi mechaber the liar? That was the Gemara that we talked about last week. So now the Gemara is going to go both ways to make us understand. In Tim Salom, the If two people are standing before the peasant and one grabs, and you say motzi and osamiyado that he can't acquire it, then hikdesha and kudeshes. Then if he would, instead of grabbing it, he were to say in front of Esden, I'm making this hagdish, right? Because all he has to do is say it. He doesn't have to do anything. So is it hagdish or not? Says the Gemara, then hagdisha ain't kudeshes. If you're not going to allow him to keep it, then certainly you're not going to allow him to make it hagdish. In other words, the Gemara has the principle that just like you can um, acquire it, you can make it hagdish, but hagdish can't be better than acquiring. If you can't acquire it because we take it out of his hand, then you can't make it hagdish. So in that case, there is no hagdish. However, in Tim Saloma, talk about Echad Bafanenu, and would see an Osamiyano. If you say that Tafa Echad Bafanenu, if he grabs it, we don't take it out of his hand, in which case, where he is silent and then he protests. So there is that little period of time after he was silent and he protests. So there's a question whether or not is he really protesting or admitting? And what do you say that the person is allowed to keep it? Then what? Then, in that case, the Gemara asks the question, Now we can really discuss the question of grabbing, right? Then what's the what's the situation if he makes it hagdish? If you're going to say that he's allowed to keep it, then if he if he says instead of grabbing it, he says, "Wait a minute, I want to make this hagdish." What's the din? Is it hagdish or is it not hagdish? Now let's understand that the kasha here is not so much is my portion hagdish. The question is, can I make the other half of it hagdish? My portion. The one, the half that I'm holding on to, that he can make hegdish. He's holding it. But can he make the other fellow's portion hegdish and he's not even holding it? He's holding only on to his own and then he grabs the whole thing. So now that he grabs it, can he make that other half hegdish? That's the real question. So on that, the Gemara is now going to tell us there's two sides to the argument. Do we say, command the talk for dummy? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, since we say the, the principle of Amir Rasa Ligvok and Mr. Alahedjot is dummy commanded Takfa, dummy, then since he's, we say that since he said it, it's already Hegdish, then it's as if he grabbed it. And therefore, it should be Hegdish. That's one way of looking at it. Or Dilma, perhaps, no. Hashtamiya Here, he didn't really grab it. He hasn't grabbed it. Uh, so if he hasn't grabbed it, then we're saying Amitsiyan Osiyoto, but he hasn't really grabbed it. So Biksiv, Biishki Yakdish is Beso Kodesh. And in, in Vayikra, the Pasuk says, if a person wants to make his house hegdish, ma beso berushuso, just like the Pasuk says, the ishki yakdish is beso, just like his beso is berushuso, is in his rishus, af ko berushuso, then it has to be in his rishus, la fuke ho delo berushuso. So in other words, the argument here is, since he doesn't have it, he announced it. He said, um, I'm grabbing it, and we're saying it is, it's as if it's in his possession. It's not in his possession. It's as if it's in his possession. But for Hegdish, according to this view, it has to be in his possession. Why? Because it says, Ki Yagdish is Beso. And since it's not in his possession, then it's not Hegdish. So the Gemara then, so the, this Gemara has a dilemma if you're going to say that, that, 
that if he says hegdish, then it's amirasal and kok amirasal a hegdish, and therefore it's as if he made it hegdish. Then what do we say? Do we say yes, it's hegdish, or do we say no? You can't have hegdish unless it's actually in your rishus. So that's the machlokus now that the Gemara is going to elaborate on. Again, it's it's a situation where someone grabs it out of the other person's hand. The person hesitates, hesitates to protest, then protests. And once he protests, the kasha is, is he admitting or is he not admitting? And there is a machlokus. Do we say that, that the fact that he didn't admit doesn't mean anything and therefore you can't make it hagdish? Or do we say, and therefore it's up, it, it does make it hagdish? And the other person now has to be Motsa Machabero. Now, there's an interesting machlokis here. So let's look at Rashi. Rashi, the Imtim Saloma. In our question, so if you're going to say that he can take it out of his hands, then the Yachloku, and we say, Motsa Machabero. Hegdesha below Takfa, if he made it hectish without taking grabbing any mukudeshes. Why do I alamekdesha me takva? Like we said just before, that you can't have hagdish being better than takva, like grabbing. It can be just like grabbing, but it can't be better. And if he did if he if he didn't hold on to it below takva, he didn't grab it, therefore it doesn't belong to the other person, you can't say hagdish that you can make it hagdish without doing anything, whereas if you in, for purposes of grabbing, you're not, you're not, it's not kodesh. Rabbi, uh, how can he make, how can he make it hectish if he doesn't own it? In other words, if the ownership has not been established yet, he's sort of preempting the, uh, the decision of the adjudicating body uh, of, of the, that, that, the judge. That, that's correct. But remember, we're now in an environment where if you grab it right in front of the Bezdin and the Bezdin sees it, it's not up to the Bezdin to necessarily uh, intervene. The Bezdin now sees that you're holding on to it. And there is a svara to say that since the Bezdin sees you're holding on to it, even though the Bezdin saw that you just grabbed it from him, but the question is if he didn't protest or protest in time, then the Bezdin takes that to mean then he's admitting it's not his, even though physically he came in holding it. So that, that's what compounds the problem, Jonathan, is the fact that Bezin just has to paskin or has to say what it sees. And now it sees one person holding it. And the question is, did the other person protest by being quiet and then protesting or not? And do we say, that's what the problem is. But, but, but Rabbi, this is you know, just building on Jonathan's point. The case that we're talking about is where he didn't grab it. Now there was two people come in holding it, and one of them says, "I want to make it hectish." Isn't that correct? It, it's not you, the two people are still holding it. It's not that one grabbed it out of the other one's hands. Both people still have it, and one person wants to make, I guess, the other person's share hectish. No, no, no. no. The question is, he did, he he did grab it. The yeah. question is whether that grabbing is null and void because the other one protested. Or is it not null and void because he protested too late? What do okay. they consider too late? <clears throat> in other words, if there is, if there is an again, there was a machlok is what that means. Okay. Either it means that the pause was too long, whatever that is. <laughs> Let's say, uh, you know, what, what's considered the pause? Halakhically, if if you pause maybe more than three seconds, then you're then then you're uh, uh, then you're considered um, to have. Uh, but have a, a pause time clock, yeah. Right. Oh, oh but there's another uh, uh, interpretation that pausing means not that you didn't pause in the moment, but that you waited until the end of the transaction and then you protested because you thought that the Besden would immediately intervene and see what happened, but you paused too late. So that could have been minutes later or a longer time. So in other words, if it's not Tokede Dibor, I grab it and you say, what are you doing? That, that's that's a protest. If you don't say a word and then the clock ticks and the clock ticks and he says, oh, wait a minute, what are you doing? Then that's the shyla of whether or not you've waited too long and you really hesitated and therefore hamotzi machavera olivariah. 
So since, since, since ownership has not since ownership has not been completely established yet to everybody's satisfaction, can you make a tenai? Say if if and when I gain possession, I'll make it hectic. No, no, that that no. that you can't you can't you can't do it al tenai. It has to be either you are able to in the moment or not. Uh, more, more than that, he's by when he when he says i want to make it hectic he is asserting his ownership of the whole thing he's using in a way that becomes a justification he's not saying i want to make the other guy my half and the other guy's half hectic he can't do that that's the other guy's half but he's effectively saying uh, uh, sort of emphasizing i'm claiming the whole thing for myself and now i'm handing it off to hectic in, in essence you're right it's a two step process but that's what he's saying he's saying that that yes, I, I'm in control. It's mine, and therefore my saying it's hectic can make your half hectic, even though you're holding it. Even though you're half right, but but he's saying more than that. He's saying, I think, uh, or to me it seems that he's saying you don't have a half. You're physically holding it because you didn't let go, whatever. But it's mine, and I'm giving it away. That, that, that's correct. Why? Because Amotzi Mechavel Varaya means right. that I own it. I have it. You have to prove that right. that that it's yours. So I do own it. You're correct. That's that's in essence what we're saying. So so this case this case would seem to me that there's it's absolutely urgent to have either an executive or some assistant at the door when they come in to to somehow say what is the problem here, and at that point it would be established what the issues are. Instead of moving it to the to front of the Besden, and then it, you get this dilemma in, in terms of hesitating or not hesitating in the interpretation of that. Which is the one of the two that's declaring he wants to make it hectic? The one that's, I mean, they're both holding it or? Well, w w one of the two wants to make it hectic. I mean, they're both coming into Besden holding it? Yes. And what, and, 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 each one, Lechaira, owns half of it. Right, and one of them makes this additional statement. Correct. Okay, all right. Correct. And to, to your point, was it, uh, who, who said it? Jay, I don't know who just said that there should be someone at the door. Yeah. This, the, 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 this reminds me, you know, in best in fact, you don't do it. But when, you know, anyone who's gone to a Hasidic Rebbe, you know, you don't walk into the Rebbe. You talk to the Shamas first. The Shamas establishes what you do, what the question and everything. Then you go to the Rebbe. So there is a, a, a clerk, if you will, at the door who's already crystallized the situation. You're saying, and again, maybe it's because of that kind of situation where you go into Besden and Besden for the first time sees it. And then all of a sudden chaos erupts because, you know, it's not just civil. One person grabs it, the other person grabs it. I mean, you have a whole, you have a whole Indian here of, of who's doing what. So it's, it's an interesting point, but that's not what happens in Besden. Besden is just sitting there and watching and extrapolates from what's going on what, uh, what, should, be, what should be done. And the, the intention to uh, declare it uh, hectic makes it sound like it's an in attempt to influence the Besden. Because look at this great thing I'm going to do with it if you declare it's mine. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. The declaration of intention to make this hectic is, an, in effect, an attempt to influence the Besden because you're telling the Besden, look at this noble thing I'm going to do with this if you declare it mine, as opposed to you declaring it somebody else's. Right. I, I'm not sure that the Besden is necessarily swayed because you're making it hectic, but in fact, that's what's happening. Is right. In other words, he doesn't get points for saying, you know, I want to take it out of the mundane, mine, his, I want to bring it into a higher plateau, because as we're going to see here in a minute, saying that, that was David, right, David, saying that opens up a Pandora's box of problems as to whether or not it's Suffolk Kodesh. Now you have a whole other host of issues if the Besden is unclear as to whether someone said it was Hegdish or not, now we're worried about, is it really Hegdish? And you're going to see from the Gemara later on, that really opens up a hornet's nest as to whether or not it's Hegdish or not, because he said it. Nice try. Nice try, exactly. So, so you know, so we're, we're a little worried about that. Anyway, um, so the Gemara now clears, <clears throat> so what's the din? 
In other words, if you're going to say that if one person grabs it, we don't take it out of his hand, which means so now if he says Hegdish, do we say that it's, it's, it's as if he grabbed it and it's okay? Or do we say, no, you can't impute grabbing because the Pusik, the Farish of the Torah says Hegdish only happens Brishuso, but it's his Brishus and brings down that Pusuk in, um, in Vayikra that you have to, you want to make your house Hegdish, you have to have a house. It has to be yours. I can't go into your house and say, this house is Hegdish. Where do I come to make your house Hegdish? It has to be Beso. So that's the Kasha. All right. Toshma. We're going to go to Vava Midbeis. <clears throat> Toshma. The Gemara says, come and listen. I'm going to give you, uh, uh, a, try to give you a terrace to this question. And it's from a, it's from a Brysa somewhere else. And the Brysa says as following. Misusa um, it was a bathhouse, a bathhouse, totally nothing to do with Kodesh, where two people were arguing who was the owner of the bathhouse. This one said it's mine, this one said it's mine. One of the two went ahead. He made it Hegdish. He said, this bathhouse is now Hegdish. It's, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Hegdish. Now, if you, there's something called Me'ila. If you use that bathhouse and it doesn't belong to, it belongs to Hegdish, then you're Odra you're, you're Anisar of Me'ila. You're Mayel. In other words, you're, you're violating, you're, you're intruding into Hegdish's domain without permission, because that now belongs to the Kayan. It's Kodesh. So what do we do? So listen here. Parshimine, so it's a it's a machloik, it's it's a doubt, right? It's not clear. Parshimine, Rav Hananya, Rav Oshia, Bukula Rabbanan. Rav Hananya, Rav Oshia, and all of the rabbis stopped going to the bathhouse. They they, they stopped going. Why? Because it was chashad. Um Rashi, Susan Marachat, Parshimine Mirachitzba. So why? So why did they do that? Because it's a Suffolk Hegdish. What he just did was a Suffolk Hegdish. Now, did he, did he grab it? Is it in his possession? None of that, right? So it's simply a question of someone announced, I'm making it Hegdish. And right away, the G'daylin there separated themselves from it. So what do we see? So L'chaira we see, L'chaira we see that just saying, the words Kodesh has an impact. Amalei Rav Oshia la Rabba. So Rav Oshia said to Rabba, what do we do here? The Oslo's kamei de Rav Chizda le Kafri. When you, you're, you're traveling to see Rav Chizda, who was the, the, the big Paisek, the Kafri. Boy mine, ask him. So, uh, ask him. Also the Sura, Sura, the famous Sura, right? Sura from Padisa. So he went, he was traveling to Kafre. The Rashi says, Le Kafre Shem Makam. And he came to Sura. Rashi says, Kishu over Derech Sura Lelech Le Kafre. So he had to pass Sura to get to Kafre. And in Sura, there was also a god. It was Rav Hamnuna. So he came to Sura. And what happened in Sura? Omale Rav Hamnuna, so Rav Hamnuna heard the question, okay, that you're going to Rav Chizda and you're going to ask him the question, what do you do? So Rav Hamnuna right there said, okay, let me weigh in. Masnissenhi, your question, what do you do, is a Mishnah. What does the Mishnah say? Suffolk Bechayres, if there's a Suffolk Bechor, what does that mean, a Suffolk Bechor? So let's look at Rashi. Suffolk Bechoros going behemer shiolda veniadua in Bechora kvar in love. A Bechor, the firstborn, has to be, and we'll see this, Bechor has to be Peter Rechem. Peter Rechem on Bechor, it has to be the first child that opens the womb. So there's a whole Shaila in the Gemara, and it's also a Shaila Lahalacha. What is Peter Rechem? 
So the question arises, is a miscarriage peterechem, a partial miscarriage? All these questions of when you have peterechem, so that if you have a child born, it is or isn't bechor. So I remember as a young boy, I had a very close friend who was the firstborn. So when he, and again, I, I didn't know much, but it, he was supposed to have a pigeon a bed. There was no Kohen. And he didn't have a pigeon a bed. So the question came up, why didn't he have a pigeon a bed? Turns out that his mother had had either a stillborn or a, a previous child that did not survive. And that was considered peterechem. So if that's peterechem, then he's now not the Bechor. He's the second child born. So this is a, this is a, a halacha lamaisa. It's an important question that comes up. And, uh, you know, it's a shayla. So Does that count for a miscarriage as well? Yes, right. So, so here is what, is what um, uh, take a look at the next Rashi. Echad Bechor Adam. Kagon shehepilo imo lefonov. The, the mother was mapil, means she had a miscarriage, a, to, to have a miscarriage. Sofik dover hapoita bebchara, sofik ruach hapela, bohaba achra of bechor. So, again, without my expertise, the question is that, that the rabbi has to examine, and that's a question that has to go to a pose, whether or not that miscarriage, maybe it has to do with how early or later, if it's an earlier miscarriage, or maybe it's already a later miscarriage, maybe the second or third trimester, I, I, I can't answer. But There's a viability issue, isn't there? There's a vi viability issue. So in other words, maybe that, that's the fine line that a, yeah, that a postdoc has to understand medically when she was um, mapil, when she miscarried, and whether or not that's considered peta reche. Would a C-section be relevant? C, uh, C yeah. yeah, because it opens the womb. It does. I thought it was. I thought it was incorrect. I thought it's only vaginal. Yeah. C, right. C but here you have the Shila. So then, then if 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 we know that a child that was born after a C section is not a bechor. I mean, so you can't be. You're right. It's not technically a petorechem. But if you had a C section and then you had the child born in the normal course. That's not a peta, I mean, yes, it's peta rechem in that sense, but it's not the first child. So there, stambazoi, it's not considered a bechor. But you're right, it may not be peta rechem, but because it's not the first child, um, I mean, you can't have a C-section, uh, um, uh, uh, you can't have, well, maybe you can. You can have a C-section with a stillborn or a child that doesn't survive, correct? Yeah. So if that's the case, then it's a different Claire. If, if, if you didn't have peterechem and the child didn't survive, what happens if a child then is born through peterechem? Again, these are all suffix questions that, that a POSIC has to analyze as to whether or not uh, it is or isn't the Bukhar. But, right. but you understand the question. So the question is, it, it, so this is what Raham Luna is saying. He's bringing from suffix Bukharis, Echid Bukhar Adam. Now this applies not only to, uh, to a human being, but to an animal. Why is this relevant? Because what happens to the firstborn? Is a male. It belongs to the Kohen. It's not yours, not your child. You have to redeem it from the Kohen. So now you're bringing the, co the Kohen in, and guess what? You're talking about Kodesh. So all of a sudden, we're dealing with Kedusha here, which is what our suffix is here. If someone makes someone something Kodesh. So if a child is born that technically belongs to the Kohen, that child is Kodesh. That's the analogy to our Gemara. Now, what do we do to remove the Kedusha? Right? What do we do to remove the Kedusha? Uh, a, a question. Yeah. Uh, really going, it's, it's, it's all this, but really going back a line or two. We're talking about these rabbis and this, this bathhouse that was made uh, Hekdesh. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. They stopped going. It goes to travels to Sura to ask a child, etc. It seems to be clearly based on who, which rabbi, that this is all post Horbon, correct? Yeah, yeah, you sure. Okay, yeah. so in general, what would the status be, particularly when you're talking about, if you're talking about something that's metaltalin and it somehow ends up Kodesh, I remember I Hyatt talking a number of times about what would you do these days if you had the, the, the lengths they would go to in Europe to avoid having a, a 
firstborn animal because it'll be hecht- or have to be do with Cohen, etc. So, uh, what would you do though if you if somebody uh, anytime post Corbin made car if it's metoplin you could redeem it or you could just not use it or whatever. But if it's if it's if somebody were to make their bathhouse truly hectish, what could you do? The, the base of Migdash, there's nobody, you know, can't take it, can't make use of it. You can't make use of it. Nobody else can. What do you do? That belongs to the Kayan. What, which Kohen? There's no Kohen that, that's Tom, I mean, you know, what, what's the... No, no, no. I mean, it's, uh, today, uh, look, look, today, no base of Migdash, everyone's Tame, and you still have to do a Pidyon Aben. It still right, belongs, but, it right, still but belongs to the Kayan. It's right, but war. that's the Pidyon Aben where it's, uh, or the, uh, you know, Pater Rechem uh, uh, and all that. That's to the Kohen. You pick the Kohen, etc. You gave property to Hektish, Bismana, Beis Amigdash. The, the people in charge of the Beis Amigdash, they would come and they decide how they want to use it for purposes of Hektish, whether, uh, you know, whatever, however they would want to use it. If it's land, they would grow crops on it. They would use in the base of Midrash or whatever. But it, it wasn't to a specific Kohen. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, okay. So, so the, whether specific or not, I, I'm not sure that, uh, that that's really the relevant point. Um, so uh, this, can, although it's, it may, may be post-Base HaMikdash, what the Machloikis here is as if there were a Base HaMikdash. In other words, it's theoretical. Right. To the point that we're not saying this Indian only applies post base amiktish. In other words, the law is the law whether the base amiktish is here or not. If there's no base amiktish, then we have to acclimate ourselves to a different reality, but it still doesn't make it less kodesh than it was as if there were a base amiktish. No, that, that's exactly the point. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Right. So then you could, in theory, end up with plots of land, people don't watch what they're saying, you could end up with lo- plots of lands that nobody could use. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, again, in, in theory, yes. In theory, that's correct. In theory, that's correct. So, uh, but, 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 but because, we don't say that because that circumstance can apply, that Kedusha isn't Chal. No, no, absolutely. Just like we say that if somebody makes themselves a Nazir Bismanazah, where they can never get out of it at the end because they can't do the carbon that would be needed. Right. That Zell doesn't eliminate the possibility of somebody becoming a Nazir. And again, Rabbi Hyde talked about somebody who did that too. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So, so um, we're in that, you know, we, we have to pray and for the hurried return of the Mesa Mikdash. So a lot of this can make real sense to us, not in the abstract. But, but, I'm going to quote the mission in a minute, but remember this question, uh, as as the Gemara says here, "Echad b'cho Adam ve'echad b'cho behema, ben tahorim and ben tameim." This isn't just a question for a newborn of a of a of a of a human, but it applies to behemis as well. Why? Because the firstborn of every animal belongs to the kohen, behema tahora. And in the case of Behemoth Tamea, we specifically single out a donkey, is Peter Hamor. The Hamor is the only unclean animal which you also redeem. So, in other words, all of those circumstances can apply here, what Raham Luna is about to say. So, let's take a look quickly here. Um, uh, so, Rashi says, Ben Tameim can go on Peter Hamor. So I'm just going to read from the from the Mishnah in Taharos. The Mishnah says in Taharos, Sofik Bechoris, Echad Bechori Adam, Echad Bechori Behema, Ben Tamea, Ben Tahara, Amotzi Mechaver, Olavaraya. So in the case of Bechor Adam, then you have to give the five sloyim to the Kohen to redeem it. But in, in the case of Bechor Behema, um, you have to give the animal to the Kohen, right? And if it's a Suffolk Bukhar, then the and the Kayan gets nothing. And it, it's important because you're gonna see how the Gemara is gonna uh, go forward. So in other words, if we're talking about a Suffolk Bukhar, then who who still owns it? The Yisrael. Who is the Motzi Mechavero? Who would want to get it? The Kohen. We'll see. Uh, we're going to see that's relevant in a minute. That's why I'm saying it this way. 
So in that situation, the Motzi Mechavero is always the Kohen because he wants to get it from the Yisrael. And also we're talking about Behema Tamera, Ben Bechor Behema is Peter Hamar. So, okay, so those are the three instances of that thing. So what does Ramam Luna tell us? So Ramam Luna tells us, Bechor Behem Ben Tahar Ben Tamerim, Amotzi Mechavero Olav Horaya. So, he is postulating that Hamotzi Mechavero Olav Horaya. What does that mean? That means that in the norm, when the child or the animal is born, whose possession is it? Israel. The Kohen is Hamotzi Mechavero Olav Horaya. What happens if the Kohen gets a hold of it? Then L'Chaira, the Yisrael is Hamotzi Mechaver Olav Araya. Let's say a Kohen and Yisrael are standing next to each other, and the Kohen grabs the Bechor, human or animal. Same situation we have. He grabs it. And the Yisrael hesitates to protest. Of course, if he protests, it's nothing. And if he doesn't protest, if he doesn't protest at all, then we say it belongs to the guy. It is the guy. But let's say he hesitates and then protests. The same circumstance. What's the din? So do you say, that now the Israel has to bring the proof that it's his? Right? So that's the question. So... And, and what do we say in that case? Betana Allah, so Bukha Behem, Bain Termit, Hamotzi Machaver, all of Araya, says the Gemara. Hamotzi Machaver, all of Araya. Betana Allah, Asurim Begiza of Avoda. And nevertheless, we say that Misafek, you can't shear it or you can't bring it to Kodesh. So Lachaira, we see a circumstance identical to our case, identical to our case, and the Kohen grabs it, and if you say that it's his, Hamotzi Mechavera Olav Haraya, and still, it's Kodesh. Isn't that a proof to our case? Our case is, we're wondering that if Takfa, and you say Hamotzi Mechaver Olav Haraya, so that means he's holding it, and the other one has to bring proof. So is it Kodesh or is it not Kodesh? We see from this Gemara that it is Kodesh, because we're taking the position, we're taking the position that the Kohen who grabs it and the Yisrael hesitated, then it's the Kohen's. Now the Yisrael is the one who has to bring the proof. Okay. So, but let's say he didn't take it into his possession. He just said it's mine. And we're considering it like his. And still the halacha is Osir Begiza Va'avoda. That now this animal cannot be sheared or serve as a regular animal because it's a Suffolk Kodesh, right? So, now you have a good kasha. Now we see that the case of our bathhouse where he says it, he didn't grab it, he just says it, L'chaira should be Kodesh because we're seeing that the Gemara tells us that on a Suffolk you can't serve or you can't shear it. So that's, that should be identical to our case. That's sort of Amnuna is saying, I have a proof from that Mishnah, that Mishnah in Bechoris that talks about a Bechor, even if he grabbed it and you say, still it's Kodesh. Now, the, so that's Rashi's position. <laughs> we'll see, let's take a look at Rashi. Uh, if it's in the hands, uh, in other words, he grabs it. 
if, if it's in the hands of Yisrael, the coin is much more of a raya, the imtakfa koyen, the shasak Yisrael, the hundred tzavach, have Yisrael motza machavera. And so all of a sudden, it switches to the Yisrael. The Yisrael is now a motza machavera. And a surim begins of avoda, misafek, shema kachim hein, right? Diktoni ha motzi mashma ben kohen ben Yisrael. The ichilo takfo, and if he didn't grab it, chamor koyach hegdish la asurin begiza va avoda shema mina the im tim tzalom takfa emi tzino semiado hekadesh mukudeshes. So that's exactly what our Gemara is now saying. It's 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 mukudeshes. And that should be on all fours a proof to our Gemara and also a proof uh, to, to the case of bathhouse and to our Mishnah Shnayim Ochsen. That if two people are grabbing it, one pe- person uh, grabs it out, and we're saying, Ein Motzin Osamiyado, that it should be considered Kodesh, that he should be able to make it Hektish. That's the, that's the proof that Rav Hamnuna now wants to bring. So, um, this is problematic on another level. Why is it problematic? Because Suffolk Hagdish, if something is in doubt, say most of the Rishonim, other than Rashi, say other, most of the Rishonim, if something is in doubt, how can you impute that if he doesn't protest that that's an admission? An admission means it's either yours or mine. And if we're both holding it, and then I grab it away from you, and you say nothing, it's proof that it's mine. In this particular case, there's no proof, because we don't know if it's a Bukhar. So the fact that the Kohen grabbed it doesn't mean that it's his. It's Suffolk that it's his, because maybe it was never... Kodesh, and he had no right to grab it. That he's a god. He's a ganav, because the Kohen can't take an object that belongs to the other fellow. The Kohen should be able to take an object that belongs to him. So if it's Kodesh, and the Kohen grabs it and says, "This is mine. It's a bachar, and I own it." Okay, then you at least have a havamina that it's a proper grabbing. But say the Rishonim. The Rajba, the Ran, almost all the Rishonim, the Ritva, how can Rashi say that it's Sophic and therefore it belongs to the Kohen, Hamotze Machmer of Araya, and therefore it's Sophic Hegdish, and you cannot shear it or you can't use it? How can it possibly be? It's a Sophic whether it is Kodesh. Kohen has no right to take it. So they don't even understand what Rashi's point is in this case. Okay, but that aside, so that's a, that's a real machoikis that we have to understand. Rashi, we have to impute that Rashi, who's telling us this, is saying it's not Suffolk, it's Vadai Kodesh. It's Vadai Kodesh. And if it's Vadai Kodesh, and then the Kohen comes along and says, I'm taking mine, then he's allowed to do it. Otherwise, why would he be allowed to do it? So that's a separate question. According to Rashi, that you're allowed to do it, this should be a proof to the Gemara that if someone, if two people are arguing over a bathhouse and one person says it's mine, one person says it's mine, and, and, and so one person goes ahead and says, What? I'm making it Hegdish, that he doesn't have to have it in his possession as long as we say he speaks it out Hegdish, we see from here that it's, that it's Kodish. And the same Shnaim Ochsen, the same thing should be true, Shnaim Ochsen. So the Chayra, we have a proof here that he does not have to have physical possession, that he can say Hegdish, and it's Hegdish. Where do we learn it from? From the fact that because it's in doubt, you can't shear or work on it. That means that from a Suffolk, you can control it. That, that's what the Gemara wants to seem to prove here at this point in time. So even if there wasn't any grabbing, it would still be a Suffolk derisa, right? C- correct. So that we, you would not be able to shear it or work it. Even if there was no grabbing, it would be a Suffolk derisa, and therefore you couldn't work that animal or shear it. Correct. 
and, and you want to extrapolate from that to our Gemara, so, to the Brisa of, of the bathhouse and to our Gemara of Shanaim Oxen, that in a similar situation, you would not be able, to, the, the person making it hegdish can make it hegdish without physically possessing. That's right. a powerful yeah. statement. Yes, yeah. So, so before we adjourn, we're going to disabuse that that notion, and we're going to say no. You can't bring a proof from there. Amalei uh, Raba, no, kedushas bechor ka amrut. We're talking about kedushas bechor. Really, we say that if a person, if the coin grabs it, no, you take it out of his hands, he cannot take it, and therefore we don't make it Kodesh. And even so, this particular case is different. It's you cannot shear or work the Kedusha Habo Meoleo. Shani, different, different circumstance. A kedusha that comes of its own, meaning you have here a case of a firstborn. That firstborn has kedusha automatically. There, it's a whole different circumstance than a bathhouse which doesn't have kodesh, and you're trying to make it kodesh. So again. The Gemara always wants to find a fine line of distinction why you can't compare two things. Gemara, so the Gemara says, you are Nuna, want to bring a, brise, a raya from a brisa about Suffolk Bukhar, that's a whole different universe. Suffolk Bukhar, a Bukhar, just by itself, by definition, is Kodesh. May Aleha is Kodesh. And therefore, even though we say, no, he can't grab it, he can't make it Kodesh, you immediately have this Suffolk Kedusha and therefore, Ms. Suffolk, you don't shear it. But to say that that uh, a, a bathhouse should be the same, you can't say. That's why Rav Hanina, Rav Oshia, and all the other rabbis, Ms. Suffolk, they weren't sure. They weren't sure. So they said, wait a minute. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, because you're imputing by saying Hegdish. But it's not the same as a firstborn, which by all accounts would be by definition. So you have a suffix, it's a tetarechem, whatever. So we say, me suffix, don't do it. But to compare that to a case where it's not an automatic meolel, you have to impute Kedusha as in the case of the bathhouse, as and in the case of Shnaim Oxen. In our case by Shnaim Oxen, we also have to impute it by saying, I'm making this talus hegdish. No, no, no. That we don't say. We don't say that you can impute it. So therefore, there is no raya here from Rabbah. And, um, and uh, we have to, again, we leave it open. Now, Mitzvah next week, when we continue, we're going to go back and forth as to why this is or isn't a, a proper, uh, a, a proper uh, shlug. Why, why, in other words, this is a correct um, distinction. But at least at this point in time, we can make a, 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 we can make a distinction and say the kadusha bomi aleo shani that is different, right? We'll pick it up from here, Mr. Shem, next next week. Everybody have a good and safe week. And uh, uh, although even in the best of circumstances, we're not going to be face to face because I, I think that there's a new halacha that. Uh, that um, we're not going to be able to jump in even if tomorrow there was no corona. The halacha now is you have to wait two weeks, right? That's that's what I'm hearing. So, Mir Tzashem, unless Mashiach comes, uh, we're, we'll be back in, in next Sunday morning, and um, we should all... Uh, someone Actually, <laughs> uh, my wife suggested to me that maybe we should all um, make challenge and represent <laughs> what we would normally have on Sunday morning so we can be in the right frame of mind with a chalent and with something else. And if you were to say 10 o'clock, you can't have chalent, we have chalent at 8.30, so there's no stira. So uh, maybe if we all get on the same page, we'll all have chalent and maybe a, 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 a l'chaim as well. So we'll, l'chaim. as, as Rabbi r- 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 Haim uh, should be well, would, would always, hey. right? Someone mentioned last week that uh, ain't a doyme, 
if you have mashke, when you don't have mashke, if you're sitting and learning, it, maybe it's always better to have a, 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 a l'chayim. So maybe we can get as close as we can to replicating our original source. <laughs> Amen. I'll leave it to everybody. Amen. To, to pass that motion. Amen. I've got one announcement I forgot to make, and that is you don't have to put the chairs back today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 Jay, and Jay, we don't have to worry worry about the Svartish Kiddish. So uh, Svartish uh, Kiddish. <laughs> all right. Everybody have a good week. We'll see you, Mr. Shem, next time. Yeah, good good luck. Luck. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Scott. Yep. Take it easy, Jay. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.